Good morning. Uh, this morning, our Sunday school lesson comes from Luke, the 22nd chapter, um, beginning with verse 10. He replied, As you enter the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him to the house that he enters and say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where's the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large upper room, all furnished. Make preparations there. They left and found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared the Passover. When the hour came, Jesus and his disciples reclined at the table. And he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds fulfillment in the kingdom of God. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among you, for I tell you, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Now, before we, we really look into the, the heart of today's lesson, let's, let's think back on the, the series of lessons for this month. Exodus 24 detailed a mountaintop experience as the Israelites agreed to enter into a covenant with, with God after they had been rescued from Egyptian bondage. It was a, a celebratory time of worship. Joshua 24 was a farewell address by Joshua as he urged his people to be faithful to their covenant and now that they were established in the land that, that God had promised them. And they joined Joshua in affirming their devotion. Another time of, of celebration and joy. Nehemiah 8 records Ezra's reading of the scriptures after Nehemiah had supervised the rebuilding of the walls of Jerusalem and the people had been allowed to return to their homeland after years of captivity by the Babylonians. The people were asked to feast and fellowship as they shared God's love with one another. Now, all of these lead up to today's lesson. It's often described as the Last Supper. But I want us to consider it as a time of communion between Jesus and his disciples. I'm sure you've seen the artistic depictions of this event with Jesus and his disciples sitting at a huge dining table, Jesus' head enveloped by a bright light to signify his divinity. But the actual event, while there was a time of of apprehension was a final opportunity to reflect a bond of joy, fellowship, and love. Jesus knew that the hour had come. He knew what was, was in store for him. Uh, but the atmosphere, in spite of what would follow, was not preset as the somber portrait that you may see on a stained glass window. The men would be reclining on cushions as they prepared to share the meal together. And in spite of the triumphal entry into Jerusalem, the threatening admonitions by some of the Pharisees, the further concerns about expelling merchants from the temple, and the growing evidence of hatred of the chief priests and temple officials. These men joined together for this meal. And I'm sure 
to them, it was really another time of, of being able to, to celebrate and remember their heritage. Let's be reminded about this whole idea of communion. A, a commune is a place where like-minded people dwell and work together in a mutual effort, totally sharing joys, sorrows, and responsibilities for the common good. A community is a local area that embraces common values and ideals as people interact with one another. Communion for us should be a time to be in community with fellow believers, past and present, from the original disciples to today's worldwide body of Christ. It's about bringing ourselves before God to partake in the life he has promised us through the death and resurrection of Jesus. It isn't just a reminder of Christ's death. It's a celebration of the incredible grace of God and the privilege of being forgiven. Christ, in essence, was saying to his disciples, see how this bread and drink are necessary to enable you to live? In the same way, I will give you life. Let's remember that the elements of communion, bread and wine, represented the Jewish celebration of the Passover, the unleavened bread, the sacrificial lamb, and the glasses of wine. The bread to the Jewish people enabled them to carry with them some food to sustain them for the first few days when they fled Egypt. The lamb, of course, was the sacrifice whose, whose blood was placed on the doors of their homes to spare them from death. And the wine was a visual reminder of God's mercy toward them. For the first communion, Jesus used these elements to reveal the sacrifice that he would make for the world. The bread was a sustaining source of food. The wine was a reminder of the blood he would shed to restore life to his people. And of course, he was the sacrificial lamb. Luke mentions that there were two servings of the wine, one at the beginning of the meal and one at the conclusion. To people in the first century, wine was medicinal, a restorer of health. Uh, even later, Paul urged Timothy to not merely drink water, but to drink some wine for his stomach's sake. Well, Jesus knew that it would be later before the disciples could truly understand the significance of this meal. There would be Judas' betrayal, an arrest, a trial, a conviction, three denials from Peter, a crucifixion, death, burial, and resurrection. Before the disciples could truly understand the meaning, as they would begin to accept their roles as witnesses and benefactors of God's grace. But the meal prepared for Jesus on this day was the final one that he would share with them before fulfilling the sacrifice necessary for the new covenant. He wanted it to be an event that they would remember and later cherish as they realized the significance. Today, as we consider the magnitude of this meal and the symbolic message Jesus implanted in the hearts and minds of his closest followers, Perhaps we should think about our sincerity when we participate in communion. A few years ago, I had the opportunity to further examine my appreciation of the communion experience. On a visit to a 95-year-old member of the church who had been homebound for a number of years, I was sharing with her some of the recent highlights of church activities. She had watched tapes of services that I had left on a previous visit and she laughed about people still sitting in the same pews. She noted that her place was now occupied by a young family who had joined in the last year. And she told me she missed seeing everyone and hearing the sermons and the music in the sanctuary setting. But what she missed most was participating in communion. 
So the next day, I spoke to our associate minister, and he volunteered to come with me after our next communion service to share communion in her home. The tears of gratitude in her eyes reminded me that too often I took for granted the significance of this time of remembrance. Too often I went through the motions without truly feeling a oneness, a connection of, to Jesus and to the body of believers past and present. The book of Luke includes at least 14 instances where sharing food or a meal is mentioned. The wedding where water is turned into wine is the first, wine is the first. and a meal with Levi, the tax collector, a meal where there's the intrusion of a woman with a questionable past, a meal with Pharisees, a meal with Zacchaeus. These and others lead to today's passage. This focus on food and, and fellowship should not be trivialized. And the progression is significant. They show a willingness to reach out in love and fellowship with all people and to cherish special times with family and dearest friends and to remember, always remember, our relationship to a loving and caring Savior. May we pray. Dear God, too often we go through the motions and fail to honor you with our lives and actions. Thank you for your forgiveness and the opportunity for salvation in spite of our shortcomings. Help us to remember that we are nourished by your love for us. Amen.